David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Today I have for you the second in a series of three top 10 lists for this year. The first list focused on pens for beginners, uh, entry level pens for those just starting off or relatively new to the fountain pen hobby. Uh, this list, however, will be focusing on next level pens. Now, what do I mean by a next level fountain pen? Well, for most folks in the hobby, you start off by picking up a few entry level pens, like those I highlighted in my previous video. And after a while, your tastes uh, become a little bit better defined and you might want to be looking to branch out a bit. Uh, you have a better idea of what you like and you don't like in a pen and might be willing to pay a little bit more for a pen as well. Uh, you want to experience some pens that uh, you've heard other folks talking about or seen online. Or maybe you're looking to pick up your first pen with a gold nib or made from a unique material. Uh, these are the types of pens that I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, in my collection, the first pen that I purchased that I would categorize as a next level pen was this Lamy Studio. Uh, the Studio comes in a lot of different colors and finishes. Uh, this one was the brushed stainless steel model. Uh, when I purchased this pen for $70, it was the most I had ever spent on a pen. Uh, and I got a lot of use out of this model. Uh, for several months, it was the nicest pen in my collection. And while it didn't quite make this specific list, I still feel the Studio was a worthwhile pen. Uh, getting it out for this video made me uh, feel like I should use this pen a little bit more often. It's been quite some time since I've inked this one up. Now, it was about the time that I picked up this pen that I built an Excel spreadsheet to document my collection and track my daily pen use. Um, if you're interested in checking it out, I'll put a link below in the notes to a video where I demonstrate how you can use the workbook and uh, provide a link where you can download it. Uh, it's something I created for my own use and I wanted to make it available for others to use if they so wish. Now, over time, I've changed things up a bit and adapted it for my own needs. Uh, one of these days, I need to update the workbook that's available for download, but uh, for, so for right now, it is what it is. Uh, it's not necessarily integrated into the downloadable spreadsheets, but I've adapted my own version to keep track of how much I paid for each pen. Uh, I feel that once you get out of that entry-level pen range, it's important to keep track of what you're spending. Uh, it's also helpful if you decide to sell any of your pens. Uh, that way you know exactly what you originally paid for them. Uh, it also helps you understand the total value of your collection. So documenting your collection in some shape or form is something I would highly recommend. Now, Next level can mean different things to different users. So the pens on this list are going to have a rather wide range of cost, starting off at about $65 to $70 and going all the way up to $275. Uh, this was a tough list to limit to just 10. Uh, like my previous lists, uh, these pens are in no particular order. So what made the list? Uh, first up is a pen I feel is very underrated. It's a pen from Pilot, which goes by two names, depending on which market you're in. In the Asian market, it's called the Stella 90S, and in the US, it is called the Stargazer. Now, this is a pocket pen which really packs a punch. Uh, I th think of it kind of like a metal Prera with a 14 karat gold nib. Um, a while back, uh, I came out with a top 10 list for my uh, favorite pocket pens, and the Stargazer took the top spot. I just love this little pen. The nib on here is just fantastic. Like, I like how on most Pilot nibs, they're actually stamped with the production date. This particular nib was made in August of 2015. Uh, this pen has one of the most satisfying capping mechanisms as well. When I use this pen, I really find myself fiddling around with the cap. Uh, the, this is a pen that I usually have just sitting on my desk most of the time. It's one of my go-to pens when I need to jot down a quick note or uh, usually like on a sticky note or something like that. Uh, this medium nib really works uh, well on low quality paper. Uh, and even though I typically prefer a much larger pen, uh, this pen just feels great in my hand. Now, the bad news is that this pen has been discontinued by Pilot. But for now, there are still pens out there to be had. Uh, and while they're still available, you can pick up a Stargazer slash Stella 90S anywhere in the uh, 90 to $150 range, depending on where you choose to shop. Uh, this is a pen that I would highly recommend. Okay. Next up is a pen from Twisby, and that is the VAC 700. 
Now, at $65, the VAX 700 isn't that much more expensive than some of the pens on my entry-level list, but I really don't consider the VAX 700 to be an entry-level pen. So, a next-level fountain pen doesn't necessarily have to have to break your bank account. Uh, as the name implies, the VAX 700 is a vacuum filler. Now, I'm not going to fully demonstrate it because it, right now it's currently inked, uh, but you pull this piston back and then you stick it in your favorite brand of bottled ink and then you depress it. Uh, and then a low level vacuum is created behind the piston. And when it gets to the front of the barrel, the opening's a little bit wider and the vacuum is broken. Once it's broken, the ink will be pulled up in, from the bottle uh, into the ink chamber. It's a pretty cool fit filling mechanism. Uh, it's also a nice introduction to an alternate filling uh, mechanism that isn't a, a converter or a piston. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the VAC 700 has a rather large ink capacity, and I really like how the color of the ink you use really changes up the looks of this pen. Right now, this is filled with uh, Colorverse Schrodinger, which is a nice green ink. So now I have a nice green pen. The steel nib on the VAX 700 is outstanding as well. Um, only three of the pens on this list have steel nibs. Uh, this one is decently smooth and well worth the price in my opinion. Uh, I really care for the VAX 700. Um, I like pens that have a, a high cool factor, at least in my mind, and the VAX 700 is definitely one of those pens. Next is a pen from Diplomat, the Diplomat Arrow. Now, the arrow holds the distinction of having my, one of my favorite steel nibs in my collection. I find the medium nib to be very smooth and have just the right amount of feedback. To be honest, I actually prefer Diplomat steel nibs over their gold ones. Uh, the steel ones are just that good. Now, there have been a few changes over this last year for Diplomat uh, as well as the Arrow. Uh, Diplomat changed distributors here in the United States. They used to be with Points of Distinction. Now they moved over to Yaffa. Um, since, the brand, uh, since the move, Diplomat seems to be uh, receiving a bit more exposure. Uh, they've been coming out with a lot of new colors uh, for the Arrow, and they've really been killing it. Uh, each of the new colors looks amazing. Uh, there's a purple and a red and a blue that look fantastic. Um, it's been real tempting to uh, not pick them all up because they look so great. But um, I am getting better at not picking up pens uh, just because they're eye candy or because I want them. Uh, I need to be able to actually uh, have a reason for wanting them or a reason for needing them rather. If my pen budget was unlimited, I'd pick them all up. Uh, all the new colors are very vibrant. Um, this one is one of my favorite colors, which is a uh, copper orange. Uh, the Arrow retails for around $140, which I feel is reasonable for what you receive with this pen. The Diplomat, redesign, or Diplomat redesigned the capping mechanism on the Arrow, uh, and it was a big improvement. Uh, at times, the older caps like this could have a little bit of a play and uh, get a little bit loose, but the new capping mechanism is outstanding. Um, I only have the older models in my possession, but the new mechanism uh, has a very satisfying click. Not unlike the uh, Pilot Stargazer I discussed earlier. It's really nice. Um, I enjoy the, the unique look and the feel of the Arrow as well. It's unlike anything else in my collection. Uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, and like I said, all the, uh, the new colors look fantastic. There's this orange, uh, and then this is one of the original colors, the black as well. Okay, next up we have a pen from Platinum, which is the Platinum 3776. Now, there are different versions of this pen. This one here is the, one of the most common. I'll call it the stock color. This is the Chartres Blue. Um, I also have one of their limited edition Mount Fuji Lake series here. This one's called the Yamanaka. Uh, they recently came out with the Kumpu as well, which was a blue-green model that looked fantastic. I kind of regret not picking one of those up. Um, I used to have one more that I really liked called the Kawaguchi, but I actually sold that one. Uh, someone had contacted me and asked me if I would sell it and uh, while I really liked it uh, I realized I need to get better at letting some of my pens go and whittling down my collection so uh, they gave me a fair price and while it hurt to let it go I have survived so uh, one day you might just uh, I might just organize the sale of a larger number of pens that I don't get that much use out of we'll see um, I really like the, the symbolism that Platinum works into some of their limited edition models. Uh, that uh, This is the finial on the Kawaguchi, which actually symbolizes Mount Fuji. 
Uh, the 3776 has a gold nib. Uh, both of mine are a bit bouncy, so if you like that kind of feel when you're writing, then the 3776 is something you might want to check out. On the U.S. market, the 3776 retails for about $175. Some of the Mount Fuji pens retail for higher than that, uh, and it's just a solid pen. Okay, next up we have a very popular pen from Pilot, and that is the Vanishing Point. Uh, the distinguishing feature of the Vanishing Point is the retractable nib. The Vanishing Point can be polarizing. There are some users who don't care for the placement of the clip. Uh, they feel that it impedes their grip. Uh, and that, you know, others don't care for the clicking mechanism and kind of feel like it makes the pen look like more of a, a roller ball or a ballpoint. Uh, not very distinctive. But uh, a lot of folks love this pen for the very same reasons. And while the, this design and the retractable nib are unique in the fountain pen world, I will admit that the Vanishing Point doesn't look much like a fountain pen. But personally, I love it. Um, I love the click, and I really don't have any issues with the clip. Uh, either. Uh, that I have a, a friend who actually performs uh, clipectomies on these pens. She actually removes the clip. So everyone has their preferences. Uh, the Vanishing Point is highly collectible. There are literally hundreds of different versions of the Vanishing Point out there with a large number of limited edition models only available through stationery and department stores in Japan. I have friends who collect Vanishing Points uh, and they have their little network of mules around Japan who pick up all of these mo new models for them since a number of them aren't available to purchase outside of Japan. Um, earlier this year, I put out a fun little video about pen clubs, and in that video, I had several members of the Triangle Pen Club, which I attend reviewing a pilot vanishing point. So if you would care to see opinions several people have of this pen, then you might want to check out that video. I'll put a link in the notes below. Um, I do have a number of vanishing points. Uh, this one here is a black one. Then I have one here that is a gunmetal gray. Uh, and then I showed you the blue that I really like. Uh, then there is this one, which is a white and black model that's affectionately nicknamed the Stormtrooper. Uh, and then finally, I have this Raiden version of the pen, which is called the Water Surface. Now, this model is quite more expensive than the standard model. Typically, you'll find a vanishing point for around $140. Uh, there have been a lot of Vanishing Point models out there which have tempted me. Um, there are a number of very cool looking colors available and it's a classic fantastic pen. Okay, on to the next pen. When you're thinking about next level fountain pens, it's a good time to begin to take a look at smaller and medium sized manufacturers. One of those manufacturers I feel is worth checking out is Franklin Kristoff. Uh, my favorite model of theirs is the Model 66 Stabilis. Uh, they come in a few different materials and finishes. This one here is called the Ice. Uh, you can see it looks a little bit frosted inside the cap. Uh, and that's on the inside uh, of the material, not on the outside. The outside is smooth. Uh, the barrel actually has the same finish, but there's ink in there right now. Um, I like how the ink kind of sticks to the inner treatment of the barrel. And uh, that's not permanent. It washes right out. I've done that several times. Um, and while this pen does come with a converter, if there was ever a pen that was meant to be eyedroppered, it was the Model 66. The Franklin Kristoff office is about 45 minutes from my house. I've had the chance to visit their facility and it was very interesting. If you are ever in the area, I would highly recommend making an appointment to visit their office where you can have a real personal buying experience. Uh, if you wanna see more about my visit to Franklin Kristoff, you can check out my review of the Model 66. If you have the chance to attend a pen show, I would highly recommend stopping by the Franklin Kristoff table early each day. They bring one-of-a-kind color prototypes to shows with them, so you can pick up unique models which aren't available to the general public and might never be. Um, I picked up this blue Model 66, and uh, just like the Ice version, this is a great pen. And I like the fact that it's unique and there might not be another one out there just like it. Okay, next up on this list is one of the most popular and best-selling fountain pens over the last 50 years. And I feel it is well deserving of the praise. And that is the Lamy 2000. Now, there are three different versions of the Lamy 2000. There is this classic Macrolon, then uh, there is the stainless steel model, uh, and then we won't bother talking about that third model. 
Well, it was called the Black Amber model, and it didn't look that much different than the stainless steel model, just a slightly darker shade. Uh, it was a limited edition model released to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Lamy 2000, uh, and it was not very well received by the community. Uh, there was nothing wrong with the pen per se. Uh, it was more the price point in which it was being offered. A standard Macrolon model is around $165. The stainless steel model is about $265, and the black amber was selling for $475. So yes, they had trouble selling those pens a couple of years ago. While the stainless steel model is nice, I'm going to focus on this classic Macrolon. The material has a unique feel that I really care for. Um, I like the large blocky clip. It does have a rather steep section, and while the section is metal, it has a brushed finish, which for me uh, really helps not, uh, it to be not particularly slippery. It has a unique hooded nib. Um, one of the knocks against the Lamy 2000 is that it has a bit of a small sweet spot, and what I mean by that is that the nib isn't particularly forgiving and adaptable to a, a wide variety of writing positions. It tends to have a position works, works, with that works best for the nib, and in order to obtain the best performance, you need to kind of stick to that particular writing angle. Uh, that it's something I mentioned a lot, uh, but personally, I really haven't uh, experienced any issues in that regard. Um, I don't have an issue kind of finding and sticking to that sweet spot. I just love the design of this pen. It's over 50 years old, yet it looks like it could have just come out this year. It's really a timeless design. Uh, I have no doubt that 50 years from now, Lamy will still be producing the 2000 and it will still look as fresh and new as it does today. Okay, I really debated about this next pen. The debate was not whether to include this pen or not. It was whether uh, it was going to be included on this list of next level pens, or if I should include it on my uh, next top 10 list, which will cover grail pens. For a lot of folks, this pen is one that they would consider to be a grail pen. And that is the Pilot Custom 823. If you're not familiar with Pilot's numbering system, the first two numbers indicate the year the pen was released uh, in relation to the age of Pilot as a company. And the third number relates to the price of the pen in thousands or tens of thousands of yen. So this pen was released in Pilot's 82nd year of business, which was the year 2000, and the launch price was 30,000 yen. So that's how it comes with the uh, comes up with the 823. Uh, now, this is the amber model. I've seen them uh, in what they call the smoke, which is kind of a medium gray. And I've also recently seen a clear model. And while the overall shape is very common to other Pilot pens, the translucent acrylic and vacuum filling system is not. I believe it's the only vacuum filler in the standard Pilot lineup. Um, as I've mentioned previously, uh, this allows the pen to have a very large ink capacity. Now, I always have brown ink in this pen, so it's a bit tough to see, but there is ink in there sloshing about. I've seen many folks state that the Custom 823 is their favorite pen in their collection, and it's easy to understand why. At around $275, uh, that's a very reasonable price for a pen that just might be the best you will ever own. Uh, next up, we have a pen from Sailor actually two pens. They are the 1911 Large and the 1911 Standard. Uh, they are essentially the same pen with the Large being slightly, well, larger. Uh, the 1911 has a classic design, but I do find the name to be a bit deceiving. Uh, while it's the largest Sailor, Sailor pen, uh, before you get into the King of Pen line, compared to other pens, uh, it's more medium sized. It's a little bit smaller than a Mont Blanc 146, as you can see here. Now, the highlight of just about every Sailor pen is the nib, and the nib on this pen is no exception. Uh, Sailor nibs are some of my favorite. There is a feeling of precision that these nibs provide that I really enjoy. The 1911 Large has a 21 karat gold nib, and the Standard has a 14 karat gold nib. The Large retails for around 275 and the Small around 175 uh, similar to the Diplomat Arrow I mentioned earlier, Sailor has really increased the number of varieties and colors they've come out with this pen. Uh, they've come out with um, some amazing colors over this past year. Uh, there was a tangerine that I thought looked amazing. 
They also have uh, several colors exclusive to specific retailers. Uh, Anderson Pens has an anchor gray model. Uh, and then uh, Goldspot Pens has this model here, which is called the Sea Glass. Um, I will be reviewing this very pen uh, fairly soon and giving it away. So look for that in the very near future. Okay, two more. The next pen on this list is from Pilot, and that would be the Pilot Custom Heritage 912. Now, this pen marked a number of firsts for me. It was the first gold nib I owned. Uh, at the time, it was also the most money I'd ever spent on a pen. Uh, I haven't regretted the purchase at all. Um, it comes with a Pilot number no. 5 14 karat gold nib. This particular nib is a fine medium, which I care for a great deal. Uh, it's more like a western fine in regard to line width, uh, but some western fines have a tendency to be a bit toothy for my tastes, but that's not the case with this Pilot nib. It is not buttery smooth by any means, but there's just something about the feedback of Japanese mediums like the ones from Pilot and Sailor that really fit me well. Um, now this is a clear difference demonstrator, which uses a piston filling system. It's the only pen in the Pilot Custom line which is a piston filler, so it's cool to see the ink sloshing around in the barrel. While I like piston fillers, this pen demonstrates the downside of pistons as well. You can see that the ink chamber takes up about half of the barrel, uh, and that you could also see that the piston mechanism itself takes up about half of the barrel. That's why systems like vacuum fillers can hold significantly more ink, because they don't need this entire mechanism back here, so there's more space inside for ink. Now, there is a translucent, smoky-colored inner cap that's a little tough for the camera to see through, but I do like that there are two threads on the cap, and when you use one, the nib is facing straight up, and when you use the other, the nib is facing directly down. Now, I realize it has nothing to do with the performance of the pen, but little details like that are important to me, uh, especially when you have a pen where you can see what's going on inside the cap. The Custom Heritage 92 is a pen that retails for about $220. Uh, it is a very cool looking pen that performs very well and a pen that I highly recommend. Okay, for the final pen on this list, we have another pen from Sailor, and that is the Sailor Pro Gear. The Pro Gear is one of my favorite Sailor models. Um, I just love the two-toned 21 karat gold nib that comes with this particular pen. It's actually a hard medium nib. Uh, just a little info on gold content in case you're not aware of what the numbers actually mean. Uh, gold is actually measured on a 24 part scale. For example, 14 karat gold means that it's 14 out of 24 parts gold which is 58.5% gold. That's why you see num like a number 585 next to 14 karat gold sometimes. Uh, 21K is 87.5% gold, and then 24 karat would be solid gold, but that's not something that you would want for your pen. Uh, gold is too soft and needs to be mixed with another metal in order for it to, be, to better perform. Uh, now this is the original Pro Gear, uh, and then there is also this Pro Gear 2, which is slightly larger and has a little bit of a different clip design. Um, it is a relatively light pen, uh, but I tend to use this pen posted just to add a little bit of weight. Um, just in comparison, this is what it looks like in comparison to a King of Pen Pro Gear, which is a pen that just might be showing up on the next top 10 list. Um, I also have a special edition model called the Kenreki, which Pilot introduced to celebrate the 60th anniversary of their nib designer. I need to review this one of these days. It's a very cool pen with a lot of interesting symbolism, but you can see that it's basically a Pro Gear model. Now, this was a, a, a special edition with a higher price, but the standard uh, Sailor Pro Gear sells for around $250, and it comes in a variety of standard colors. Uh, there's also a slim model, which is slightly smaller and sells for a little bit less. So, that is the list of my top 10 favorite next level pens. Uh, well, if you actually did the math, I snuck in an extra one in there, so it was actually a top 11. So, in order to see a recap, let's head over here to camera two. In no particular order, my list of the best next level fountain pens is the Pilot Stargazer, then we have the Twisby VAC 700, followed by the Diplomat Arrow, 
There is the pilot vanishing point. Then we have the Franklin Christoph Model 66 Stabilis. We have the Lamy 2000. The Pilot 823. The 1911 Large, as well as the Standard. The Pilot Custom Heritage 92. And finally, the Sailor Pro Gear. Uh, now, I hope this list gives you some ideas for what you might care to pick up when you're looking for a next level pen. There are a lot of great pens in this category. If I was forced to only use the pens in this list for the rest of my days, then I would be very pleased and not really feel I was missing out on anything. There is enough variety in here to keep me satisfied and have fun with the fountain pen hobby. If you have a favorite pen which you feel uh, fits this next level category that didn't make this list, feel free to let me know about it in the comments below. Now this list was a challenge. There were an additional 10 pens that I considered to make the list. So there is a lot, about, lot out there worth checking out. Um, I do have reviews of each of these pens on my channel and I'll put links in the note below, notes below to all of those reviews if you would care to see a more in-depth look into any of these pens. So until next time, Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.